Professor Inbar, thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. I know it's a long day for you guys, so um, I'll be brief. Um, I just want to give you a little perspective from uh, New York and um, those 300 colleagues of mine at Sesame Workshop, uh, a nonprofit organization which was started 40 years ago uh, out of the war on poverty in the United States with the idea or the observation, rather, that television was indeed the most powerful teacher, communicator of content. And we can debate at whether that is a good thing or not, but it is a fact that television teaches. It's not whether it teaches, it's what does it teach. So I agree totally, Professor Inbar, with your observation that technology alone is not the answer. Uh, but those of us who work in educational technology believe that we must harness it uh, like energy towards a positive future for our children. And in many ways, it can reach children that traditional teaching methods have failed at. Um, we are in 140 countries around the world. It's some people call Sesame Street now the longest street in the world. <laughs> um, we have grouches in all kinds of countries, including Ufnik who was seen in the hallways somewhere earlier today. Um, and we're in multiple media formats, which has really changed in the last decade, exploded. Um, and you must realize, as we do every day, to put your head in the inside the head of a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, nine-year-old child. These kids will never know the world before the internet, will never know the world before cell phones, will never know the world before iPods. And where our grandparents or my grandparents thought the refrigerator was an incredible invention, I took it completely for granted. I never thought about the refrigerator. And our kids, are never going to think about the internet in any way, uh, in any similar way than we do in thinking how amazing, confusing, <laughs> or whatever it is for us. And, you know, we like to say that children are native to technology and adults are immigrants. And I think that's really true. And many kids are coming into school more, uh, more able to uh, be proficient in the media and in technology than the teachers, which is a huge issue and a huge gap that's occurring now. So those of us at Sesame Workshop know um, that we have to harness these different kinds of media technologies. This is the first year in our history that more than half of the people who connect with our content are doing it not through traditional television. So they're doing it through YouTube, they're doing it through iPods, they're doing it through all these other platforms, including cell phones. And we need to be delivering content that is going to promote a cognitive education, a health education, a, a social and emotional uh, education, which are the three cornerstones, of course, of the whole child curriculum, which every early child development expert will tell you is necessary to raise a healthy child. So we're working in that in the United States, but we're working also in many different contexts, especially here in Israel with Rehov Sumsum, which many of you know, and our wonderful partner Alona Apt is here in the back from Hop TV, who's doing a great job of not just taking Sesame Street to Israel, but creating a street in Israel. And in fact, there's a real street in Haifa named Rehov Sumsum now, which uh, was uh, opened up just last year. So what kind of a country is this? It has only records. So the next focus for, um, for us in terms of education and, and, um, and literacy is going to be around a, the digitized classroom, um, what we are calling Sesame 2.0. And what this really is is embedding digital content into formal educational um, settings. We have 40 years, 4,000 hours of preschool content that has been digitized into biteable chunks that can be embedded in a curric preschool curriculum inside of classrooms, inside of 
uh, child development centers uh, and in, in less formal childcare settings within the home. And we are working now on trying to apply technologies to help parents, to help teachers reinforce the messages through the Muppets, through the live action films and the animations that we've created now for over 40 years. In addition, we believe that a focus uh, is necessary on six to nine year old kids. Um, in the United States, uh, there is a lot of research now that points to the fact that if a child is not um, keeping up in the fourth grade in terms of reading abilities, the chance of his finishing high school just drop off the map. And high school graduation in the United States is the greatest uh, indicator of uh, those who stay out of poverty. So there is a huge investment that needs to be done and, and attention which needs to be paid towards kids in third and fourth grade between the ages of zero and eight. And in fact, the Obama administration in their new platforms has now defined early childhood education as zero to eight. And this is the first time this has ever been done. And I think what it will give us is a longitudinal uh, holistic ability to address the needs of kids from very small children all the way up to eighth grade, eight-year-olds rather, which is totally critical in order for them to succeed in school and then go on to be productive citizens. Um, we can harness the power of technology. We can harness the magnetic attraction that children have to new technologies like video games. Uh, and there's no reason why these things cannot be teaching tools rather than simply war games or misogynist um, games. We, next week, will be at Google in Mountain View, California with 250 um, people who are leaders in the field of technology to try to inspire them to focus on engaging children with educational curriculum through the entertainment power that they've been able to create. And we've, we're gathering an incredible group of people from the US Department of Education to the head of Google, people from Apple, people from all over Silicon Valley, a number of foundations who are coming together to try to really see if we can get a holistic focus on moving the needle in digital media towards education. So that's a quick summary um, of how we're approaching our work in our what we call our 41st experimental year. And um, I look forward to the dialogue, and we're very uh, grateful to be welcomed here in Israel. Thank you.